What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going through a blogger tutorial. So how to create a blog using the blogger platform. Now if you're creating a more professional website and all the websites that I create at this time I do through WordPress but I still know the blogger platform very well. It's actually how I got started with creating websites and blogs in general and I had to create one recently for a client so I figured why not create a tutorial about this platform. It's still a really good platform. It's just kind of basic depending on what your needs are. Now if you're just trying to create a blog, it can be very useful to use Blogger because it's completely free. The only thing you have to pay for is a domain name. So we're going to get started here. If you go to blogger.com, what you're going to need is a Google account. So you can sign into your Google account first. What I'm going to do next is click on create my blog. So I'm just going to click on the button right here, create your blog. So that's going to bring me here. It's going to say you will be seen as blogger profile and display name. So I can enter a display name here. So for this example, I'm just going to do Surfside PPC. Now you can create a blog about anything. I mean, some of the most popular options are people just blog about their family and home life. A lot of people blog about food and recipes. And then other people just blog about some of the things they like to do, their hobbies, whether it's outdoors, activities, going camping, different things like that. So whatever you want to blog about, the main thing is it really has to be something you're passionate about because writing blogs on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, can become very difficult if you don't enjoy what you're blogging about. So starting with Blogger is a great way for creators to get started with their first website. And keep in mind, you can always take your Blogger blog and transfer it over to a WordPress website if you need to keep expanding your website. So that's why I like Blogger because you can always get started here. The first website I created was on Blogger. I ended up selling that website and it became a huge source of revenue for me. So there's really no downside to using Blogger besides that it doesn't have some of the capabilities of the larger providers like WordPress, like Wix, and some of these other website providers out there. So my display name, I'm just gonna keep as Surfside PPC. I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to blogger now. Okay, so this is what you're gonna see when you get started. We don't have a blog created yet, so what we wanna do is create a new blog. So I wanna create a blog that where I can share some of my different videos to, and I can write some different articles than what I actually do on surfsidepc.com. This is gonna be a little bit of a project. You're gonna see this account is managed by surfsidepc.com. Now what I wanna do with my new blog is I'm just gonna title it JB Marketing Videos. So again, what I wanna do with this blog is share some of my videos and write some of these shorter articles and different things and it's really gonna be a long-term project. I'm gonna see if I can actually get organic search engine traffic to this website by sharing some of my content here and kind of putting together some new content on this blog that I'm not gonna put on my website because my website's kinda of gonna mirror my YouTube channel. Now I wanna put a few different things over here and we're just gonna see if I can find any success with it. Now next is going to be our address. So mine is just going to be jbmarketingvideos.blogspot.com. So for free, you get a .blogspot domain name. Now I highly recommend just upgrading, paying the 10 to $20 per year for a domain name. Domain names are really cheap and you can get something like jbmarketingvideos.com. So I'm going to come to my address here. Okay, so we're going to do jbmarketingvideos.blogspot.com. Now next is going to be themes, so I'm going to go over how to install custom themes, but they have a lot of different themes that you can use here. The only really way to know the theme that you want to use is to play around with it and to install different themes, see how your website looks, and see what works best for your needs. Now the basic themes on Blogger are not that great. I can go through some of the different ones. My favorite one here is Notable, um, so Notable is not a terrible one. Some of these other ones kind of look like websites from the past, so you don't really want your website to look like an old website. You want it to look new, so when people do go onto it, it looks like a brand new website and something that someone keeps updated, especially on the theme. Now, these other ones aren't terrible, but I like Notable the best, and I'll go through some of these different themes as well, and again, how to install a custom theme. So we're gonna click on Create Blog, and now it's really that simple to get started. So now we have our blog created. You can kind of see it in the background here, but what I want to do is get a custom domain name for my blog. So you're going to see JB Marketing Videos. I'm going to click on search. So you're going to see right here, jbmarketingvideos.com is available $12 a year. Some of these other ones are a little bit more expensive. So .co, .guru, .life. I would highly recommend just doing .com. I don't ever really use some of these other different extensions. So I'm just going to take this one right here and we're going to click on buy. Okay, so you're gonna to have to enter some information, basically just your name and address. And then what we wanna do is turn on auto renew just to make sure we don't ever stop renewing our blog. You can always turn that off later. You just have to keep in mind that it's gonna keep renewing until you turn it off. 
So now the next thing we need to do is pay for this and it's gonna be $12 for a one year registration. Okay, so now you can see it's registering my new domain name. It's gonna say it will be connected to Blogger once it's registered and then I'll be able to manage my domain in Google Domains. Now you're not limited to just using this domain with a blogger website so again if you always go to wordpress or another provider later you can still use this domain name so this is going to be your domain name for your website so we're going to come here real quick click on view blog and we're going to open it up and you can see right now it's still saying jbmarketingvideos.blogspot.com so now we're going to come here to publishing so it's going to be in settings and basic over here and publishing so our blog address is going to be google domain settings http and then we're just going to do www you have a dot here, jbmarketingvideos.com. We can click on save. Okay, so what we wanna do next is <clears throat> you're gonna get an email to the email that you use to set up your Google domain. So it should come right into your Gmail account. So I have mine open here. So you're gonna get an email that looks like this. So what we wanna do is verify our email now. So you must be done it within 15 days to keep your domain active. So we're gonna verify our email. Okay, so now you can see if you open up domains.google.com, so if you open up this page here, or if you click on your verification, you should see something like this. So under your domains here, you're gonna have jbmarketingvideos.com, or the domain that you just set up, you're gonna see services is gonna be blog or blog, privacy protection on, renews on, and it'll be a year from today's date. So we have website with blogger unlimited, so what we wanna do is come back over to our blogger page and you wanna make sure that under publishing here, so under settings, basic publishing, you can see we have www.jbmarketingvideos.com. We click on edit here. We can just make sure we have it all set up properly. Okay, so what we're gonna do is make sure we redirect jbmarketingvideos.com to our URL. We're gonna click on save. And now what we can do is you can see jbmarketingvideos.blogspot.com will redirect to our URL here. So if we come over here to view blog, so we're just gonna open our page again. Now you can see up at the top, we have jbmarketingvideos.com and we can get started with creating our blog and we have our custom domain name. So this is where I would recommend getting started for a small investment per year, you get to have your own custom domain name and it's all gonna be managed through Google domains. So you don't have to worry about renewing it or anything like that. So now what we can do is start getting started with building our blog. So you're gonna see here when you're in your back end, there's a lot of different options here. So you have your blog name up at the top. You can view your blog at any time by clicking on this link or just going directly to your URL. I usually just keep it open in another URL as I'm making changes. Now, if we come back over here, you have posts, you have stats, you have comments, earnings, pages, layout, theme, and then settings down here and then you have reading list and help. So I'm not gonna go through these two at the bottom really, but everything above I'm gonna go through. So if we come here, the main thing that you wanna focus on with your blog is your posts. So your blog is gonna be made up of a series of blog posts as you're writing and as you're creating, you wanna create new blog posts here. Now, if you're not familiar with blogging, if you've never created blog posts, you're gonna get better over time. So it's gonna take some time to get better at this. I created my first blog over 10 years ago and I barely knew what I was doing, but over the course of time, as you write more blogs, you're gonna learn more and more about how to create a great blog post. So don't be worried about creating the best possible blog post the first time you ever write anything. So I'm just gonna get rid of this message here for the time being. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new post. When you create a new post, you're gonna see a page that looks like this. So I'm gonna go through some of the different options that you have. There's a lot of different things here in this menu up here. You have labels, you can schedule your blog post. So maybe you wanna put it out tomorrow or next week. You can always do that and keep things on a schedule. You can adjust the permalink. So this is gonna be the link, the URL for your individual blog posts. You can use an automatic one or create a custom one here. So I'll go through that as I set up this blog post. You can adjust location. Um, so I'm not gonna change location here, but you can adjust the location of where you're writing this blog post. And if we come down here to options, the three main options here is you can allow or don't allow reader comments. So you can just adjust that here if you'd like to. In compose mode, so you have compose mode and you have HTML mode. If you have HTML written in compose mode, you can either choose to interpret the typed HTML. So if I set up something here like strong and then sample HTML strong. So this is the code for making your text bold. What you're gonna see here is if I do show HTML literally, then it will just show this in the blog post. If I say interpret typed HTML, then it's gonna make this strong in the blog post. So you don't really need to worry about that too much, but if you are trying to write a blog post about different HTML, this is where you would adjust that. Or if you just wanna make sure that Blogger interprets the HTML and just posts it right to the page, so you don't have any of these tags showing in your blog post, then you would wanna click this one here. 
Now line breaks, there's BR tag. So BR stands for breaks. You'll see that right here. That's another HTML tag. So if you come here and do break, then that's gonna set your line to a new line. So you can either choose the break tag or just using enter for line breaks. So in that case, you would just come here, click on enter twice. If you type in something here like line break, then you know that there's gonna be a space between this sample HTML at the top and the line break. So just some different options that you have. We're gonna click on done for now. I'm just gonna get rid of this text. So that's the main thing over here on post settings. Now, when you're done with a post, what you wanna do is click on publish here. You can always preview your post at any time and you can also save your blog post. So if I come over here to post site title, what we'll do is my first blog post. Now the two different options you can write in are compose or HTML. So if I come here to compose, the benefit of using compose is if you do type something like my first blog post example, what I can do is I can take this text right here. Maybe I want to make it bold. So you could just do that. It makes it a little bit easier. And then if we come over here to HTML, you're going to see it's going to have, so this uses the B tag in WordPress. It's the strong tag, same exact thing. It's both going to be bold your text. Now this is going to be the HTML. You see, you don't have nearly as many options here. You can do the same thing with bold and HTML, but you don't have the option for some of these other things up here. So you can see here in compose, you can kind of add in video. You can insert special characters. You can set up jump breaks here. You can adjust the alignment. If you come over to HTML, you can't do as many of those things over here. Now, I generally write in HTML because I just think it makes it easier. And you can always jump back and forth between Compose and HTML as you're writing your first blog post. So we're gonna come back over here to Compose. And I just wanna go through a few of the different things that you can do. So I'm just gonna write sample text right here and go through each of these little options here. So first one is undo. So you can always undo what you just did. So if you have a change that you made and you wanna undo that change, you can usually undo or redo it as you are creating your blog post. Very helpful if you accidentally delete some text or something like that. Now, if we come over here, this is gonna be font. So you can change your font. So we'll come here, change it, and you can just adjust your font right here. Next is gonna be text size. So right here is just text size. So normal, large, largest. So you can adjust your text size as you're writing. And you can come over here and you're gonna see there's headings, subheadings, and minor headings, and normal. So if you're just writing normal text, then you could just keep it right here. Now, if I come over here and I do heading, and we take this and we do heading, it's gonna make it larger. It's gonna put some space between the text. So if we come over here and do subheading, so we're gonna come here, we can do this subheading here. So as you're creating blog posts, you can use headings, subheadings, and even minor headings to kind of go over some of the different details as you're writing. So with, for example, the main thing that you're writing about, so if it's gonna be your first, first blog post, your heading here would probably be my first blog post or something along those lines. Now, the other things over here, this is italic, underlined, strike through. So any of these different things, you can adjust your text easily. You can do underlines and you can do strike throughs. So all those different examples you can do here, you can just easily click on those buttons and set up your text differently. You can change your text color. So if you wanna change your text color, obviously that makes it a little bit hard to read. So you can do all of this and it's gonna show as you're writing your blog post. Anything that you do here is gonna show on your page as you have your blog post published. So you can always preview these changes over time, but if you're changing anything here, you can do text background color. So maybe I wanna have background color, we'll do orange, and you can see when I publish it, it's gonna look like this in my blogger post. So we'll get rid of this here. We'll just come over here and just keep it as white. Now the next thing is gonna be link. So if we come here to sample text and we do a link, it's gonna take that sample text right here and we can link to a web address or an email address. So let's just say I do surfsideppc.com. You can test this link if you need to. You can open the link in a new window so that people keep your website open and open the link in a brand new window. Now you can add the no follow attribute. So that tells Google, don't crawl this link for my page. So you can add that if you'd like to. You can click on learn more here if you wanna learn more about some of the different attributes for your link. But if I just keep this like this, click on okay. Now when someone comes to this page and they click on sample text, they're gonna to go to my website. You can also change this and make sure you do have HTTPS if that's the way the website is set up. You can always just come up and copy and paste the link. So if I come over to my website and let's just say I wanna to link to my own website, copy this link, come over here and just paste this link and it'll be just like that. So you can click on okay. And now anytime someone clicks on this link, it's gonna to go to that separate page. So the next thing is gonna be 
inserting an image. So if we come down here even more and we insert an image, so you can insert images from your blog, from your Google album archive, from your phone, from your webcam, or from a URL. So if I click on upload here and we'll just upload an image. So I'll just upload the Surfside PPC logo for now. So we'll click on this image. After you upload it, you wanna click on it, click on add selected. You can upload multiple images if you want to, and then you're gonna have it there. Now you can change the size here by clicking on the image and doing small, large, medium. And then what you wanna do is come over here to properties and you always wanna enter alt text for your images. So this tells Google what the image is. So if I come here and say Surfside PPC logo, Logo, then Google knows that this image is the Surfside PPC logo. You can also do the same thing in title text. So you don't have to do title text, but alt text is used for Google to understand what the image is. If I put an image there of the beach, then what I can do here in alt text is just type in beach photo, photo of the beach, or just beach. So anything like that, Google is going to have an understanding of what that photo is. So you always want to use image properties here and click on OK. You can adjust the size here and you can adjust the alignment. So it's really easy to kind of upload and manage your images. Now we're going to keep coming down. And what we want to do is if you see here, I can type alongside this image if I use a left alignment. So that's just something that you can do. So text alongside image. OK, and we're going to keep scrolling down. Obviously, this is going to be a really ugly blog post, but I'll create a couple more just so you can understand the different types of blog posts you can create. This is really just going over all these different things under the post section. So you really need to understand all of these and it helps to know all of them as you're setting up your first blog post. This is really the main part of Blogger. So if we come over here, next is going to be to insert a video. So if you click here, you can insert one directly from YouTube, from your own YouTube videos, or you can upload a video. So you have three different options there. Okay, so I'm going to do from YouTube, and I just typed in Google Ads, and I'll just take in one of my videos that I created recently, seven Google Ads, search keyword targeting best practices. So we'll click on enter, and it's going to put this YouTube video directly into our blog post. So now you can adjust the way this looks. So one of the things we can do is come over to HTML now. So you're going to see HTML doesn't really look as good as the compose portion does. You're going to see all these different codes here, these line breaks. It's going to have some bold text. So a lot of different things going on here. But as we scroll down, you can see that our YouTube video is down here embedded. And what we can do is come here and adjust the width and the height. So let's just take the width and we'll double it. Okay, so we went from 320 to 640. And let's just take the height and we'll put it up to 400. So now we can come back over here to compose and you can see it's gonna look a little bit better over here with our video. So you can adjust all of that by going to HTML and it makes it a little bit easier to kind of adjust the way your video is gonna look. So we're gonna keep scrolling down. Now the next thing is gonna to be to insert special characters. So you can see there's all these different characters here. You're probably not gonna use this that often. You can draw a symbol here, search by keyword. If you're looking for something like an arrow, maybe you're looking for some of these different triangles or things that are pointing towards specific texts or images that you have, you can use those here. You can look by different symbols and numbers and modifiers. So you can kind of look at a lot of different options here, but ultimately I don't really use special characters that often. If you do need to use them in your blog post, this is where you would do that. Now the next thing here is gonna to be to insert a jump break. So we're gonna click here to insert a jump break and you're gonna see there's gonna be a break in the page. So we'll just do jump break. So we'll be able to see that as we publish this blog post. Now you can see right now I have center alignment. So if you want to adjust your alignment, what you can do is just take the text that you want to adjust. You can copy it. Or if you're just on this one line, you can just click right here and you can come over to alignment. You have left, you have center, you have right, and then you have justify. So if we come over here to left, it's going to line it to the left. The main thing that you probably don't know is justify. And if you do that, usually it's going to make it stay even across the entire page. Usually for text, you want to use left alignment for headers. You might want to center your headers for videos, for images. You might want to center them. It really depends the format. You just want to make sure it's easy to read for people who are reading your blog. So we'll keep coming down a little bit. And what we have next is numbered lists. So you can click on numbered lists. And if we come down here, okay, so you can see we have one. So number one, and if you click on enter, it's going to keep that numbered list. So number two. In order to, to get out of a numbered list, you're going to have to hit enter a couple times. And there you go. So that's numbered lists. So we'll keep coming down. And the next thing you can do bullet points as well. So instead of a number list, you would just do bullet point, bullet point two, and so on and so forth. So we'll do the same thing, enter to get out of it. Now, the next thing is going to be quote. So if you have a quote that you want to enter, so maybe you have quote example here, it's going to show up as a quote. Okay, so the next thing is going to be remove formatting. So that means if we do sample formatting, and if I come here and I do bold text, 
then what we can do is click on remove formatting and it's going to put it back to normal so that's how remove formatting works if you ever want to remove the format for a specific text in your blog post so we're going to keep scrolling down here and now the last but not least here is going to be check spelling so if we click on check spelling it's going to show some of the different errors here that we have now this is an app that i'm using grammarly so this actually shows the different errors that are in my blog post so if you want to download that you can but this will just show some of the different errors as you set up your blog post and you can always go back and see if you misspelled anything or if there's any words that google does not recognize okay so that's really it as you're setting up your blog posts obviously you're going to be writing for the most part so you're going to have a lot of written text here and as you're writing more and more text you might want to use some of these things the main thing that i really use are these headings here so you can set up headings and subheadings so those are two things that i use pretty often links so if you're linking to specific pages if you're linking to other pages on your website you can use that there inserting images inserting videos those are things i use very often as well alignment so if you want to put some text in the center anything like that that's where you would set up alignment so now we can click on publish okay so you can see i have custom permalink set up here we'll just do automatic for now and you're going to see the way it looks so it's going to have the date and my first blog post so let's just do custom and i'll do my first blog post and we'll click on done okay so you can see it has the date here and my first blog post .html. so what we can do is click on publish here but maybe what we want to do is preview first so we'll click on preview so preview is going to open up a new page and you're going to see what it's going to look like with our first blog post and we can scroll down here you can see exactly what it looks like a lot of space here that it doesn't really show in the article as we're setting it up so you can see some of these different things here quote example bullet points numbered lists alignment jump break so all these different things that you can see this is a link so if someone clicks on it it's going to go directly to our website so what we can do is click on publish and now we have our first blog post here you can see we have it we can edit it we can view it now one thing if we edit it so if we click on edit any changes that you have you're going to have to click on update here you can revert an existing blog post to a draft if you want to so if you want to make sure go to back and unpublish it for the time being you can do that as well now one thing to keep in mind that i didn't go over is labels so labels are used as your categories so if i come here to labels and i do category one comma category two and click on done you can see I have a couple different labels here now we can click on update and now what we can see down here is we have my first blog post category one category two if we click on a label here so if I click on category one it's going to show at the top here so you can label your posts to keep everything as organized as possible and it can be very useful as you're setting up different pages on your website specifically pages where people can browse all the different blog posts that you have on that portion of your website so if you're writing in different categories for example if i have a category for google ads if i have a category for facebook ads i can set different categories here and then i'll have different labels for my blog post so if we come here we want to view our blog post again so you can see we have our blog posts here some of the different labels so if i click over here on category one it's going to show that blog post for this first category showing posts with the label category one so if someone wants to post a comment, they can do that here. They can click on the blog post. It's going to open it up into a new page. Okay, so now let's come back to our homepage real quick. And you're going to see it's going to look a little bit different now that we have our first blog post here. It's going to pull in this image as the featured image for this blog post. You can see the date right here. So now our homepage is going to be made up of all of our different blog posts. And our most recent blog posts are going to show on our homepage. So if we come back over here to Blogger again, we have our first post created. So we'll just click on update here, keep everything updated. It's bringing me back into this settings page, but we'll come over to posts. So now we can create new blog posts as we go. The next thing I want to go through is stats. I'm going to go through blog posts a little bit more, but I want to go through stats. So if you click here, you can see page views today, yesterday, last month, all time. So any of the different pages that are getting traffic for your website, you're going to be able to see them here. Now, obviously, I just created this, so I'm not getting a lot of page views yet. I created this website several days ago. It's showing, you know, four page views here. So some of it might just be bots that are looking at the website. It's saying traffic sources, for the most part, are directly from my website. So it's very unlikely you're going to get a lot of statistics here as you first set up your website. So you can see stats overview, stats posts. So it's going to show page views for specific blog posts traffic sources so where we're getting traffic from this is saying we're getting traffic from baidu.com so it might just be that they're crawling our website so i wouldn't look at this as we're starting to get a lot of traffic yet or anything like that search keywords amazon so i'm not really sure how someone found our website by searching for amazon so i'm assuming that's just going to be a bot as well it's saying someone went to bing.com searched amazon and found our website very unlikely that that happened so this might just be that uh, they're starting to crawl our website so we're going to come over to stats here and we can click on audience and you can see it's going to show page views by browser 
by operating systems, and then different countries that are accessing our website. And you can see some more over here. They have some graphs. You can look at the now, day, week, month, and all time. So statistics can be very helpful to understand what's happening on your website. So the next thing is gonna be comments. So any comments that you're getting on your website are gonna show up here. You can remove content. You can remove any comments that people have. It'll show some comments in the spam comments. If there's anybody trying to leave spam comments directly onto your blog, Google is gonna be able to filter them. Well, Blogger is gonna be able to filter them and you can just delete them to make it a little bit easier. Next is gonna be earnings. So one of the main reasons that people do create blogs and write blog posts is because you can incorporate Google AdSense onto your blogs. So my blog doesn't currently qualify for AdSense, but the way you wanna qualify, if we click here, now we can come to the eligibility requirements. It's gonna say, do you have your own content created from scratch? So for a website, blog, original content. So Google AdSense allows you to monetize your content on your blog, on your website. Same thing with a YouTube channel. So we can come down here. It's gonna say, does your content comply with the AdSense program policies? So there's certain types of content that they don't accept, specifically if it's rated R content or anything like that. So something that they don't really approve, they're not gonna accept Google AdSense on your website. And then are you at least 18 years old? So they can only accept applications from applicants who are over 18. If you're under 18, you can have a parent or guardian sign up using their Google account and you can be approved that way. And then you can always switch over to your own Google account once you hit 18. Keep scrolling down and it's gonna say, why is my site not eligible for AdSense? It's gonna say you should focus on writing more content, which in turn provides significant value and try again in the next few months. So what I've always found and basically my rule of thumb here for being able to set up Google AdSense is write 20 blog posts, maybe write 10 blog posts, but as you start writing more and more blog posts, it becomes easier to just monetize your content with Google AdSense. But if you don't have blog posts there in general, you're not gonna make any money on your website yet to begin with. So basically what you wanna do is start writing some different blog posts, start writing valuable content. It doesn't, it could be about anything. So whatever your blog is about, and then as you start writing more and more blog posts, Google will approve your website. It's not that hard of an approval process as long as you fall in line with their program policies and you start writing original content on your website. You're able to implement Google AdSense on your website and you can start earning from your blog as you start getting more and more visitors. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you do have ads, so let's say you have ads on your website, do not go and click your own advertisements. Google has filters set up for all of that. They have spam filters. So if you're trying to click your own advertisements and make more money for yourself, they're gonna know that a bunch of clicks are coming from the same IP address. So don't do that. You're not gonna be able to game the system. They've had those policies in place for 10, 15 years. So just make sure that you're just writing content and trying to get traffic to your page. So what I'll say here with statistics is what I've always found is if we come here to overview, with page views, you need to get at least a thousand page views per day to really start earning some money from your content. If you're getting, now you might earn a little bit with 100, 200, 300 page views, but as you get above 500 page views and especially above a thousand page views, you're gonna start earning a monthly income from your blog. It might not be a full-time income, but what you wanna do is just try to keep increasing your page views to the point where you can get 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 page views per day, and then you can really start monetizing your blog, and you can really start earning an income as you set up your blog. Okay, so the next thing I wanna go through is pages. So if we click on pages here, you can see there are no pages, so we create a new page. It's gonna look just like setting up a blog post. What I'll say, the difference between a pages is pages are usually static. So if I create a page here and I do something like Google ads, then what I can do is take any of my Google ads articles and add them to this page here. So if I say, okay, I have articles about Google ads, negative keywords. I have an article about Google ads, keyword match types, and so on and so forth. Maybe I have a Google ads tutorial. I can link off to all these different pages here. So I can take this right here. We'll link and we'll send it to our page on our website. So just a quick example, so this isn't the exact URL obviously, but let's just say I have a Google Ads tutorial blog post published on my website. I can link to that page. So that's the way I look at pages is they can basically be used as category pages. So it allows you to categorize all of your blog posts. Now you can also use this doing labels and then you might wanna set up your pages doing something else. But this is the way that I would set up a page here. We can click on published and you're gonna see we have our page right here. So we can come here, we'll view our page. So you can see we have our page, jbmarketingvideos.com slash p slash googleads.html. 
And you can see we just have our logo at the top. It's having what our page title is up here and then some of the different things down here at the bottom. So you can see we have our Google Ads tutorial that we link to. So pages can be used for people to browse your website much easier and you can use them to kind of categorize some of your content the same way that you would use labels. So if you come over here to labels, you're gonna see some of these different categories as well. Now the difference between a label is it's gonna show all the blog posts with a summary. So pages you might just wanna use as some of the different content that you adjust over time. You don't necessarily need to use pages, but it's just another option that you have as you are setting up blog posts and you're trying to keep your website as organized as possible, you can use pages. You can also use pages to say something like contact us, about us. So if we come back over here, so maybe we wanna create a new page and we do contact us, we can come down here and just say, send us an email at admin at jbmarketingvideos.com and we'll get, okay, so we just have send us an email at our email and we'll get back to you ASAP. You can also set a link for this email. So if we come here, we'll copy it, come over to link and we can do admin at jbmarketingvideos.com and we'll just click on publish. So that's another option for creating pages is either creating something like a contact us, terms of service, terms and conditions, disclaimers about us. So some of those different pages you can create or you can create pages to help set up some different categories and kind of link to some different pages on your website. So a couple different options when you're creating pages. And now just keep in mind, if we come back here to the homepage, you're not generally gonna see the pages here unless you have them listed down here on the right-hand side or somewhere at the bottom. So that's how pages work in Blogger. So now the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna come over here and come to layout. So layout's gonna allow you to adjust the actual layout on your theme. So you can add sidebars, you can add some of these different things here. So before I do this, what I wanna do is come over to theme and I just wanna go through some of the different themes that they have. So if we come over here, I'm using the notable theme right now, but if we come over, you can see there's different themes down here at the bottom. So this is the theme that I'm using, notable. So what you can do is look at some of these different themes. So let's just say I wanna use this Soho theme. So I can click on preview and now you're gonna see what it's gonna look like if I choose this theme. Now, obviously I don't want a picture of a cat at the top of my marketing videos page, but if you're writing about maybe different animals or your own cat or something like that, you could just use the image they have here. You could always just change the image as well, but you can look at how some of these different themes are gonna look for your website. So we're gonna get rid of this now. You can click on Contempo, so we'll click on this one. So if we come down, you can see how it looks. Now, in my opinion, a lot of the blogger themes look like older websites. So I kind of mentioned that earlier, so I don't really like a lot of the themes that they already have. So if we just click on Simple here and you come over, you're gonna see just kind of some text at the top. Now we can adjust this logo. I'll show you how to do that as well as we go. And the other thing that we can do is if we come down here, you can look at all these different themes but we can adjust and install our own themes here. So if you want to install your own theme, what we're going to do is we're going to come to the top here. You can see our theme here. So this is a live desktop view, mobile view. To install your own theme, you're going to have to click on backup restore here. So you click on backup restore and it's going to say download a backup of your theme or upload a theme from a file on your hard drive. So what we can do is click on close here and my favorite website to find blogger themes is btemplates.com. So if we open up btemplates.com, you're gonna see free blogger templates and you're gonna see all these different templates here. So these ones look a lot better than the ones that are provided for free from blogger and these are all free as well. So if we come down here and let's just say for example, I like this Gridster one. So if I click on demo, you can see the way that this is gonna look and it looks a lot better than the other theme that we're using. And it looks like a normal website. It doesn't look like we're just creating a blogger blog. So you can see you have a logo at the top here. We have a little menu here. We can link to some different pages and then any of our blog posts are gonna show up just like this. So it's gonna make it a lot easier for us to actually set up our website by using a more professional theme. So if we come over here, what we can do is we'll look at another example here. So we'll just look at baking blog. So we'll click on demo and you can see you can have your logo up at the top here. We keep scrolling down. There's some links up at the top. So this one's not as good as the other one in my opinion, but it definitely looks better than some of the themes provided by blogger. So if you come to btemplates.com, you can adjust and look at some of these different templates here. We'll look at Nordic. This will be the last one that we look at for the time being. And the other thing you can do is view it on a phone. So the way it's gonna look on a phone, the way it's gonna look on a computer. So you can see some of these different blogger templates and we can just download any of them and quickly install them on our website. So the one that I like the best is Gridster. So I'm gonna come over here to Gridster and we're just gonna click on download. Okay, so we're gonna scroll down here and you're gonna see free download. So we're gonna click on free download here and it's gonna download a zip file to our website. So we've already downloaded this zip file. 
So what you want to do is unzip the zip file. Okay, and when you, once you unzip that zip file, you're gonna see it here. So under downloads, we have Gridster, so we can open up the folder. And now the XML document here is what you wanna upload when you're uploading it to your Blogger account. So we're gonna come back over here to Blogger, and again, what you wanna do is come to theme here, click on backup restore, so we've just downloaded our theme already. So what we wanna do is click on choose file, and we wanna come in here to our Gridster folder, and we're gonna upload this XML document right here. Okay, so we have gridster.xml, we're gonna click on upload. Okay, so it's showing that it uploaded successfully. So now if we come over here, we can view the way that this looks right now. So if we come over to view blog, our blog is gonna look completely different over here. So you're gonna see we have this here, we have our first blog post. So it's stretching the image a little bit. You can learn the image size for the different themes that you're using. I highly recommend finding a theme that you like in the beginning. You can always adjust themes over time, but it makes it much easier if you stick to a consistent theme. So now we can see here, we have our theme, we have our first blog post, we scroll down, there's a lot of things down here as well. So as people come to our homepage, they can view some of our recent blog posts and you can see them at the top and as you scroll down. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna come over here to Blogger and we're gonna come back to Layout. So if we click on Layout, now we can adjust some of these different things here. So first we can start with our favicon. So if we click over here, so this is gonna be the little square icon that appears in the top of our page. So if we just look at an example right here, this is the favicon for Blogger. So it's just this little logo right here. So what we wanna do is we wanna update our header. We wanna update our favicon so we can have it a little bit more towards our blog. So I already have a logo created for this website and I have my icon here. So if we click on edit again, Okay, so what we wanna do is take this icon right here, we're gonna double click it, and it's gonna show right here, and now we can click on save. Okay, so now you can see our icon has changed, so when we go to our website, we'll have a new icon for our website. So what we wanna do next is we wanna update our logo here at the top, so if we have our header here, you're gonna see, it's gonna say configure header, blog title. So what we wanna do is, we're just gonna do placement instead of title and description, and we're gonna upload an image here. So we're gonna take our image, choose file, and what I wanna use here is this logo over here to the right-hand side, so we can take this over here. Okay, so we have JB Marketing Videos, Project by Surfside PPC, we'll click on Save. Okay, so now let's see how our website looks. So if we come back over here to our website, we have our new theme here, so let's reload the page. Okay, so we're starting to look a lot better here. Now if I take this down just a little bit, you can see we have our new icon in the top corner here, we have our new logo here, and you can always adjust those things over time, so if you have a new logo, if you're not sure how to create a logo, anything like that, you can always go to fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. There's a lot of logo designers there and you can find logos for as cheap as five, 10, 15, $20. You can find different designers who will create custom logos for your business that look really professional. And then a lot of times they'll also create the fab icons for you as well. So now we have this set up, our header here. If we come over, we can adjust this HTML JavaScript gadget if we want. Once we incorporate AdSense on our website, we can change this and make sure this is showing a Google AdSense ad, just another way to monetize our website. Now, the next thing is gonna be Pages menu here. So if we come over here, you can see we have our home page. And what we can do is if we click on Edit here, we can add more pages. So if we come over and we click on Edit, what we can do is we'll add Contact Us and we'll add Google Ads. So we can come down here, we'll click on Save. Okay, so we're gonna come back here, we're gonna reload the page. Now you're gonna see it's gonna have Home, Contact Us, and Google Ads. So as we set up some different pages on our website, we can make sure we add them to this menu here. Okay, so we're gonna come back over here. Now there's all these different things you can do. So blog post gadget, that's gonna show our most recent blog posts. You can add gadgets here. So if we come over to gadgets, there's AdSense, blog search, HTML JavaScript, profile. So a lot of different options here. I'm not gonna go through each individual one, but you can see a lot of different things that you can add to your blog or website with ease. You can add all these gadgets here. And if we come over here, you're gonna see some of the different gadgets we can add. So HTML, JavaScript, popular posts. This is gonna be our sidebar. This is gonna be the one that's showing up in our left-hand side, so blog posts. If we come over here, you're gonna see about, pages, search this blog. So we'll come over and you're gonna see some examples. So about, so it's gonna show our pages here, search this blog, it's gonna have a search bar. We can always come over here and you can see search this blog. Maybe we would just wanna move this over into our sidebar. So we'll do that. We're gonna save arrangement and we're gonna come over here, we're gonna reload the page, and if we come to the top here and click on our first blog post, you're gonna see over on the right-hand side, now we have this search over here. So you're gonna see we have this HTML JavaScript, there's nothing here so it's not showing, and then we have the search this blog, popular posts, 
come over here you can see some of our labels if we have a blog roll so we want to link to some different pages we can come over here okay so if we come over to blog roll here we can link to some of the different pages so we'll click on edit okay so i've typed out surfsideppc.com and beachfronttocore.com now keep in mind here what we can do is we're going to come here to enter we're going to set a line break okay so we want to set our a targets here so we're sending traffic to surfsideppc.com we're just linking off that page and to beachfronttocore.com and we're going to set a line break here so they're not showing up side by side and we'll click on save so now we have our blog roll saved so we'll come over here and reload the page okay so you can see our blog roll surfsideppc.com beachfronttocore.com so we can kind of show some of the different pages that we like we can link to other similar websites or other similar blogs and some of the different blogs that we read that are related to our blog okay so you can adjust all of these things to the right hand side you can remove or change any of these things over here if we come over here you're going to see report abuse we can just come here to edit and we can just remove that all together click on okay you're going to see about me a blog archive gadget so all these different things that we can do here and you can cha change over time so we're going to get rid of this btemplates.com one we're going to come over here and just remove this okay we have popular posts, search this blog, HTML, JavaScript. Since we're not using it right now, we're just going to remove it for the time being. You can always add those later and add in your Google AdSense ads. So if we click on add a gadget here, you can just click on AdSense here and it's going to display the advertisement on your sidebar above your post, below your post, or up in that top section I showed you earlier. We can keep scrolling down. So one thing you can use that makes it a little bit easier besides a blog roll is just a link list over here. So if we click on link list, this is how easy it is to add a gadget. You would just come here, add a new site name so we can do Surfside PPC. Okay, so we'll change it to blogs we love, number of items to show and list. We'll just keep this empty, leave blank to show all the links. Sort, we'll just do don't sort for now. And then site name, Surfside PPC, we'll click on add link. So now we have a link here. So we can just do the same thing. We'll do beachfront decor. Now, obviously what you would want to do here is make sure you're just adding a bunch of different pages that are going to be relevant to your website. So if we come over to here to blogs, we love. Okay. So you can see our links here. You can adjust them, move them up or down. You can edit the links if you want to, but we'll click on save. Okay. So now if we come back over to our page and we reload the page again, so now you can see it's probably going to look a little bit better than the blog roll did. So you're going to see blogs. We love blog roll looks pretty similar. This might be a little bit easier to manage that way. So we'll just come over here and we'll take this blog roll here, click on edit and we're just going to remove it all together. Okay, so you can adjust the layout. They make it very easy and you just click on save arrangement. You can always preview your layout as you're adjusting it over time. Now, the other thing I want to show you is if we come back over to theme again and we come here to customize, this will bring you to the blogger theme designer so you can see what it looks like. You can click on some of these different themes here to put them live on your website to see what it looks like. We can adjust the background. You can adjust widths. You can adjust your layout. So you can either go to your dashboard directly and adjust layout, or you can do it right here and adjust your layout as well. We can come over here to adjust widths and you can do this here. Now this works a little bit better with some of the existing themes, but if you have a custom theme, then you might just have to kind of use the layout to adjust any of these things. So this is the blogger theme designer. You can adjust the text color. You can adjust the text sizes. You can adjust your background colors, anything like that, that you want to. So you can see there's a lot of different options with some of these different themes. You can adjust all of that by coming in here to the theme designer. So if you come back to blogger, all you need to do is click on customize and that's going to allow you to adjust that here. So we're going to come back over to layout real quick. And what I want to do is I want to edit the footer of the page. So if I come down here to the footer, you can see I have some of these different social links here and they're not linking to my own social media channel. So that's what I want to do now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and you can always click on edit HTML. So I wouldn't edit HTML if you're not more familiar with this, but what you can do is come in here to edit HTML and you're going to see all the different HTML for our theme. So you can adjust this if you're used to editing HTML, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll to the bottom and I want to find the area where it allows me to edit that footer so I can put in my own links. So you're going to see edit here and you're going to see something like footer start. So that allows you to adjust these links in the bottom. So if I'm doing this for join us on Facebook, what I can do is let's just link to my Facebook page for Surfside PPC. So we'll do facebook.com slash Surfside PPC. So now I know when someone clicks on these different social links, they're going to find my social media channels and it won't just be broken links. Okay. And we're going to click on this Facebook link down here at the bottom and you're going to see it's going to bring us directly to our Facebook page. Okay. So you just want to make sure you do that. So from top to bottom, you want to make sure that your page is giving people a great user experience so they can find your social media channels easily. And a lot of times what you can do is also add your social media channels in your sidebar here or above or below your blog post as well. 
So we're gonna come back over to our homepage here and we're gonna add one more blog post just so I can kind of show how to create really a more advanced blog post and something that people are gonna be willing to click and something that hopefully will rank in Google. So we're gonna come over here to Blogger again and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to Posts and we're gonna create a new blog post. So I wanna create a blog post about dynamic search ads because I have a few videos on my channel about dynamic search ads. So we're gonna put them all into one blog post. So what we're gonna do here is come to post title and we're gonna do dynamic search ads tutorial for 2019. So this is gonna be my blog post and I just wanna create a blog post that basically repurposes some of my different videos into a written form while embedding my videos onto this page. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of fast forward through some different portions at time, but let's just get started. We have some text at the top, dynamic search ads can be a challenge in Google ads and Microsoft advertising. So we're gonna keep scrolling down. The first thing I wanna do is link and embed my dynamic search ads video here. So we're gonna come over here and we wanna set this up as a subheading. So we have this set up as a subheading here. So to make sure there's not too much space in between everything, we're just gonna get rid of some of this space here. We're gonna come over here, click on enter. So now we have our subheading set up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over and we're gonna insert a video from YouTube and we're gonna do dynamic search ads. So I've created a lot of content about dynamic search ads. So this is my tutorial right here. We keep scrolling down. I have another one right here. What are dynamic search ads campaigns? Keep scrolling down. I have how to create dynamic search ads in your existing Google ads search campaigns and then how we can do a complete dynamic search ads tutorial. So we're gonna click on this one, we're gonna click on select, we're gonna enter it here. And what I wanna do is I wanna take this and I just wanna keep it as a left aligned. So it's a little bit easier for people to just kind of scroll down. We're gonna keep everything aligned to the left for this article, but we're gonna come over to HTML and we're gonna increase the size of this. So the width right now is 320 by 266. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to 640 and we're just gonna do 400. And now what we can do is come back to compose and just to see how this looks for now, we're going to click on preview. Okay. So, so far so good. You can see we have our dynamic search ads tutorial for 2019. Maybe we do want to keep some of that space here. So it's a little bit spaced out better. And maybe I do want to center this heading. So that's kind of why you use preview makes it easier to see how things are going to look. So we're going to come over here. We're going to take this and we're going to take the video and we're going to highlight both of them and we're gonna align them to the center. So we'll make sure we take this and align it to the center as well. So now we have these both aligned to the center. We'll put a little bit more space here and we'll click on preview again. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. So now we can start to see how this is gonna look. So we can come back over to Blogger. Now the other thing you can always do is if I think this text is too small, I can come here and we can come do text size and we can do large. So we're gonna make this a little bit bigger. We'll click on preview, come over here again. And you can see it's a little bit larger, a little bit easier to read. So we're going to keep it as that size. So you can adjust all of these things really easily in Blogger as you're setting up your blog posts. Now, one thing I want to do is I want to come over here with labels and I want to set my labels to Google ads and we're going to do Microsoft advertising. So dynamic search ads are perfect for both Google ads and Microsoft advertising because you can create campaigns in both of these different channels. So now I can use these labels and I can set up these different categories here so people can find this blog post as they're looking for more content around these different categories. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to the bottom and we're gonna keep adding more content here. So now here's where there's not really one best practice that you can use, but what we can do is we can come over here and we're just gonna to go to left alignment. What I can either do is I can start writing some text about this video up at the top here, or I can do all the text at the bottom. So what I can do is enter another video. So we're just gonna come here and we're gonna do Google Ads video tutorial. So to kind of go over how to do it in Google Ads. So maybe I wanna do all my videos at the top, and then at the bottom, I'm gonna have some text about how dynamic search ads work. So that's one way to set up my content. I can also set it up to put a video tutorial here, write some different sentences about dynamic search ads, and then do the Google Ads video tutorial, write more about dynamic search ads. But what I'm gonna do for this is enter all my videos at the top. So we're gonna do our Google Ads video tutorial here. We're gonna take this again. We're gonna set this as a subheading, and we're gonna center it. So we're gonna take this and put it into the center, keep coming down to the bottom, and we're gonna enter so you can kind of see this a little bit better. Okay, so next we wanna embed another video so we can come here. You can also go to my YouTube videos if you have videos here. You can upload specific videos, or if you do from YouTube, you can also just enter URLs here to find videos easier as well. So I'm just gonna do dynamic search ads because my videos are showing up right now, and we'll click on search. We're gonna take our Google dynamic search ads tutorial, click on select, enter it here. So we wanna make sure this is centered as well. So centered, 
come over to HTML. We want it to be the same exact size as the other video. So with width, we're going to do 640 again. And then with height, we're going to do 400. Okay, so we can click on compose over here and now we have some text at the top our dynamic search ads video tutorial keeps going down our google ads video tutorial keep coming down we'll click on preview again see how it looks so you can see our first real blog post is starting to come come together much better and we have our dynamic search ads google ads video tutorial keeps going down you can see we have our different social media channels here. So this will allow people to share these some, to some of these different social media channels. We can probably adjust these, so we'll figure out how to do that. If we keep coming down, you're gonna see tags. So some of our labels that we have, people can subscribe by email. And if we keep scrolling down, there's gonna be people that can comment here. So we can always adjust the way these pages look. So just keep that in mind. You wanna make sure that your pages look as good as possible. So for this one, I'm gonna do some different videos here at the top. And maybe what I wanna do is, come up to the top here and I want to put a little bit more text to kind of explain how this article is going to be written and how people can kind of browse this article. So we're going to come back over and what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the top. So we're going to come above here and we'll come down and we'll do, so we'll take dynamic search ads. We'll come here and we'll set this as our heading. So now we have our heading as dynamic search ads. We'll center it. So we're going to center this text here. We'll put some text below it. And what we're going to do is Okay, so I've edited my article a little bit. So if we come here now I have dynamic search ads, a little bit of text about that. We have our first video tutorial. We keep scrolling down. We have our Google ads video tutorial. Keep going. We have what are dynamic search ads campaigns with another video here. And if we keep going down, we have how to create dynamic search ads in your existing Google ads search campaigns. So people can kind of understand a little bit more about running dynamic search ads. And I can keep adding to this article. But for right now, what I'm going to do is publish it. So I'm going to click on publish. Okay, so we have another blog post here. So we have our second blog post. So obviously in order to create a successful blog, you have to write a lot of blog posts. It's not just gonna happen with five or 10. So some of the best blogs have thousands of blog posts, but I always say generally start by trying to get at least 100 blog posts. So when you get to 100 blog posts, you're gonna start seeing your traffic increasing and it's gonna keep happening as you hit 200, 300, 400. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, but if you focus on creating several blog posts per week, if you can create one per day, that'd be great, but it can be really difficult. So really a good goal is to create two, three, or four per week, depending on how long your blogs are and how detailed your blogs are. Now you can just go one per week, create about 50 to 60 per year. If you can create more some weeks, less other weeks. So that's kind of where you wanna be is trying to create as many blogs as possible. Some of the best blogs have been built over the course of five, 10, 15 years. So it's not gonna be built overnight. So just keep that in mind as you're writing your blog post. So we're gonna click on view here and open it. And we can see we have our dynamic search ads tutorial for 2019, keep scrolling down and we have some different text. So again, we have to make this text large again. So all we'd have to do is come here to edit. We're in compose. You can see this one, we have large text. So we're gonna keep scrolling down, make sure our text is large across the board. So come over here, text size, large, keep coming down. We're gonna do it for the text down here. Okay, we wanna click on update. So we'll just make sure it's gonna look the same throughout. And then we're gonna come back over here. We'll reload the page. And now we have a pretty good first blog post as we're getting started. Now it helps that I have a lot of these videos on my YouTube channel. So ultimately what I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna to link to a lot of different marketing videos on this page. And it's not just gonna be my own marketing videos, but I'm gonna to try to use it to share some of my content here onto Blogger. I also have my own website where I'm writing some of these posts as well but just another way to present information and present content and kind of share some of these different ideas from other websites and other YouTube channels as well. So that's what I want to do over the course of time on this page. So if we come back to our homepage here, you can see we have another blog post here. It's just going to pull in this image automatically. So we can come here. We're going to click on the blog post again, come down. You can see some of our labels. So we have the categories we created with the first blog post. We have our blogs. We love at the top. People can search this blog popular posts. It's just going to show the other blog posts that we have because we don't really have many blog posts yet. As we get more views on individual posts, it's going to show here. So we'll keep scrolling down. We have our archive here. Keep coming down. People can share this. So we can adjust this share menu here. We're probably going to have to edit HTML, but people can share this to some of the different social channels easily. We have related posts. So if we have any other posts down here about Google ads, Microsoft advertising, it'll show down there. You can see tags, so that's just gonna be our labels. So if we click here on Google Ads, 
it's gonna show our Google Ads tag right here. So it makes it really easy to kind of adjust some of our different pages and keep continuing to create content. You're gonna see posts filed under Google Ads and you can see we have our label up at the top here. So it makes it a lot easier to manage all of our content. Now this is our Blogger tutorial. There is a lot more that you can learn, but ultimately what you have to do is get started in Blogger. Hopefully you learned a lot from this video. I went over how to create a blog, how to set up your own custom domain name. So we have jbmarketingvideos.com, how to adjust your header up here, your logo. Again, if you wanna create, get a logo created, go to fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. You can also just create your own custom logos and upload it here. You can always change those over time. The real key to creating a great blog is your theme needs to be a good theme. So hopefully using some of those btemplates.com. So I like this one Gridster here, but btemplates.com, it's completely free. Just go there, download a theme, and then I showed you how to click on backup restore, upload your own custom theme. You can also use the ones that are provided by blogger and then the other thing you want to do is adjust your layout so i still need to adjust the layout on this blog i'm going to continue to do that after i finish this video and then last but not least the main thing that's going to help you have a successful blog is writing a lot of posts so just having two posts here is not going to be enough we're going to have to continue to create posts you want to create posts every single day and just try to get your content out there and the more you put out there the higher you're going to rank in google now, last but not least, if we come over here to settings, you're gonna see basic title. So we have our title here. We can adjust our title, so JB Marketing Videos. What I can do is marketing. Okay, so we have learn digital marketing with our marketing tutorials. We'll click on save. And then we have description here, so we can click on edit. It's gonna say 500 characters max. Okay, so we just have learn about digital marketing, affiliate marketing, PPC advertising, social media, website, and more by watching the video tutorials provided by JB Marketing Videos. We'll click on save. Privacy, what we're gonna do is listed on Blogger and visible to search engines. So you can say, don't let search engines find your blog, but you generally want search engines to find your blog unless you're trying to keep it as private as possible. So you can just keep no on both of these if you want more privacy for your blog. So publishing, we went over that. We publish it onto our own custom domain name. Keep scrolling down. We're gonna do yes, yes for HTTPS. You can add more blog authors. So you click on add authors here and you would add other people that will allow people to write onto your blog public so blog readers we're just going to have this as public you can do this to private only blog authors private only certain readers so if you just want to have your blog for members of your family maybe you have a blog for your company you can do that as well so we'll just click on cancel keep it as public now there's a lot of different options here post comments and sharing so posts show at most seven posts on the main page i can adjust that over time post template so you can create a post template here if you want to it's going to keep this Anytime you create a new blog post, showcase images with Lightbox, we'll just keep that as yes. There's some more about comments down here, and if we keep scrolling down, it's gonna have the comment form message, show word verification, some of these different things you can adjust. Email, so if you wanna adjust your email here, you can have posting using email and create your own blogger email if you want to. I have that disabled. Keep scrolling down, language and formatting, so you can adjust these if you want to, your time zone, your language. So let's just say for time zone, I wanna do Eastern time. Okay, so we'll just adjust that here. So you can just click on save settings as you adjust these different things. Okay, we're gonna come down here to search preferences. You're gonna see meta tags description. So we'll come here and we'll just use the description that we created previously and we'll click on save changes. Okay, so you can set up errors and redirections if you want to, crawlers and indexing. So you do wanna set up a Google Search Console for this account. I'm not gonna go through this. I have Google Search Console tutorials on my channel if you wanna learn more about setting up Google Search Console for your website. We're gonna come in here to other, so you're, you can delete your blog here, allow blog feed, adult content. So any of these different settings that you wanna adjust here, you can import or back up your content at any time and manage the videos that you upload directly to your blog. I would highly recommend just uploading your videos directly to YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google, Blogger is owned by Google, so it's really easy to just upload your videos to YouTube and then embed them onto your blog or blog. Come in here to use user settings, you can adjust your user profile, you can use Blogger Draft if you want, I'm not using that here, and then you can adjust the language on Blogger. So all of these different things in settings you can adjust as well. So again, if you have any questions about creating your own blog or blog, it's a very easy process. You just use your Google account, and in this short period of time, we've created our first blog, we have a blog post here, we have our other blog posts, I'll probably end up deleting this one, 
and we can continue to create blog posts over time and adjust the way that our blog looks so it continues to look as professional as possible. So you can see we have our first blog post here. The more we add here, the more we create, the better it's gonna look, the better it's gonna perform. And then as we come in here to stats, hopefully we can get more and more people visiting our blog. You can see I have 34 page views today. Those are probably all me. But as we start getting more page views, we write more blog posts, we can start to set up earnings onto our Google Blogger blog. And over time, hopefully we can increase our Google AdSense earnings and set up kind of a passive income stream for ourselves. So that's Blogger, that's my Blogger tutorial, how to create your own custom Blogger blog with your own custom domain name, start writing posts, get started with labels that are gonna be used for categories, creating some different pages like your About Me page, your Contact Us page, all of these different things. And as you start using this platform more and more and you start continuing to work on your blog more and more, you're gonna learn so much and you're gonna keep getting better and you can always take your Blogger blog and import it into WordPress. That's another tutorial for another video. Thanks again for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.